folks, I'm Chris and I'm your Commander Mechanic, here with another tune-up. But before we get into today's special patron request, I wanted to remind you that if you like what you see on the channel, please subscribe. Many of you that watch this show or our others aren't subscribed, so if you want to see more from us, including other special videos, please hit that subscribe button. And for all of you, I know it might sound cheesy, but ring that bell too. It helps us get in front of a larger audience so that we can do more with these shows. Remember that if you want to pick up any of the cards that you see in any of our videos, check out our affiliates, our Canadian affiliate Harry Tarantula, where you can use the promo code CMDR space mechanic at checkout or our TCG affiliate link in the description below. Also, if you want some goodies like our submitting viewer this week, check out our Patreon where you can work directly with me on a tune-up and I can take a look at your decks and give you some advice. You also get access to exclusive deck building videos and walkthroughs of my personal decks. So with that said, let's check out what's in the workshop. Premium patron Pulsating Kiwi writes, I've been stuck in a rut for a while and it has me wondering if you might be able to help. I was wanting to take the Lathril Blade of Elves precon and turn it into a 4 to 6 turn clock for my opponent. Let's push it just shy of CEDH and there's no budget limit. Maybe if you could do something like the Prof from Tolerian Community College does with his Sig River Cutthroat deck, turning it into a tribal and or Voltron strategy able to interchange between the two at a moment's notice. Thanks for helping support the channel, Pulsating Kiwi. We've taken a look at precons and upgrades before, so let's break this down. In this case, we're going to break down the Golgari Elf Tribal deck out of Kaldheim. Lathril Blade of the Elves is a decent 2-3 for 4 mana, coming with Inherent Menace and a sweet combat damage trigger. When Lathril deals combat damage to a player, you make that many 1-1 Green Elf Warrior creature tokens. Right there, that gives us a few things to work with. Going wide and going tall. But that's not all. Lathril has the activated ability to tap, along with 10 untapped elves, to dome each opponent for 10 and gain 10. Talk about a bit of reach and incentive to go wide. This means we would really be incentivized for making Lathril evasive, deal more damage, and have vigilance. Because Lathril is the only one that needs to tap for that ability. The other ones can have summoning sickness. Lathril can't have it. So if you can give your commander vigilance, deal 10 damage to make 10 elves, you could then immediately activate this ability. Whew, talk about powerful. This list right out of the box is certainly strong. There are a lot of great elf tribal synergies that can be used in decks for years to come. I'd consider this a staple to pick up because elves never go out of style. There are some pieces in here that you can slot into just about any deck with an elf theme. From elven ambush to pride of the perfect to timberwatch elves. These pieces will always be tribally relevant, whether you're building a deck that's black, green, any combination of colors, as long as it focuses on elves. You even get great mono green pivot commanders in Dwinen, Guiltleaf Dane, and Marwin the Nurturer. So if you wanted to convert the deck to mono green right away, you have the commanders at the ready. On the same note, if you wanted to make a mono black elves deck, the list includes Miara, Thorn of the Glade. Easy enough to turn into an elf tribal aristocrats list with a payoff in the command zone. There's some great interactions in the deck. Casualties of War is always relevant in our format, but I Blight Massacre can be a one-sided board wipe, and Poison the Cup can and will be some needed targeted removal. But what I like most about the list by default is that it gives you several ways to win without attacking. Pact of the Serpent lets us draw cards at the cost of life, or use it as an elf-flavored fireball. Shaman of the Pack is an incredible uncommon that can take an opponent out of the game with only a modest sized board without lifting a finger. And Skemfar Shadow Sage can again nuke down opponents based on our elven army. Oh, 
ways to ensure if we can't profitably attack due to maybe a ghostly prison, we'd still be able to finish the fight. Unfortunately, there are a few downsides to the list. While it's strong right out of the box, the mana base is abysmal. Besides the basics and command tower, every non-basic land comes into play tapped for zero benefit. There are only two cards in the deck that cost triple green, and only seven cards in the deck that cost double black. You could likely get away with a 75-25 split of basics between forests and swamps, and the deck would function absolutely fine. There are some non-basics that I'd recommend including, but for the purpose of this deck and specifically upping its power level, we'll scrap this 37 land base. Then there's the fact that the deck has a staggering 40 creatures. 40! Yes, it's a tribal deck, but 40 creatures is absurd. Some of these are not powerful or useful cards, while some certainly are. We can tweak and adjust this number pretty heavily to get it to the power level you're looking for. We may also want to be a little more lenient on the tribal side of things to allow for some more utility. Though with a modular approach, we will ensure one of our builds stays strictly elf tribal, while the other one lets us get big and punchy. So because we're going to be looking at the two variations of the deck, I want to establish a baseline. What parts of the deck are going to be remaining consistent between the two options, tribal and Voltron? Let's create a mana base that's solid, sturdy, and can be used regardless of the mode we're playing in. Wirewood Lodge is a must, after all, in either mode, we want to be able to tap Lathril after an attack, so untapping is as good as Vigilance. Orin Reef the Vastwood is maybe the only Enters Tapped utility land that I would include in the deck, just due to the potential of having a great number of creatures enter at once with Lathril's on combat trigger. Shizo Death's Storehouse is a great way to give Lathril more evasion, useful regardless of the build we'll be playing. Other than that, we'll include some of the better multicolor producing lands like Lanwar Waste, Overgrown Tomb, and Undergrowth Stadium, which remain excellent for color fixing. Guilt Leaf Palace is perfect and is basically an untapped dual land for us. If you're feeling really ambitious, Dark Boar slash Slither Boar Pathway and Tainted Wood, along with Nurturing Peatland, could all be included. Otherwise, it's Command Tower and Basics. That's all we'll need. So with our lands fixed, let's look at the veggies of the deck. The mana rocks and spells that will stay consistent regardless of our build path. Arcane Signet and Soul Ring are staying in, but let's work on some of our core options. Our ramp won't come in the form of spells because, surprise, we're going to want elves. So on top of the elvish mystic that comes in the list, let's add Llanowar Elves, Findhorn Elves, and Elves of Deep Shadow. But perhaps the best mana dorks we can include here are Deathrite Shaman and Priest of Titania. Deathrite is the best one mana dork we could hope for in our format and is an elf. And since we'll have a volume of elves, Priest of Titania is essentially a Gaia's Cradle on legs. With the added benefit of counting any elves our opponents may have in play too. If you're looking to push the power level, we can optimize our removal. Assassin's Trophy and Abrupt Decay are both excellent inclusions, so is Beast Within. All three are versatile ways to get rid of just about anything we could want to. Force of Vigor makes a great addition, letting us hit two targets at the cost of an additional card. A great oh no button. For board wipes, I would supplement I Blight Massacre with the objectively better Crippling Fear. Along the same vein is Elvish Dreadlord from Commander Legends. It has a Dyes trigger and Encore that can help us wipe away any non-elves. Toxic Deluge and Damnation are always good inclusions, but would generally only be used if we're behind, as we are a creature-based deck. For card draw, we'd want to pivot based on our build. If we're going tribal go-wide, we'd want Beast Whisperer, Skemfar Avenger, and Guardian Project. These help us draw cards when we cast creatures or when our elves die. Great ways to keep up the advantage engines. For our go tall strategy, we can include Return of the Wild Speaker and Rishkar's Expertise. Both ways to take advantage of our commander getting pretty swole. 
Both builds would absolutely love Skull Clamp too. No easier way to turn those 1-1 tokens into tons of card advantage. There are some more cards we'll want to run regardless of our build to help protect our creatures. Heroic Intervention, Golgari Charm, and maybe even Wrap in Vigor are all ways we can shrug off a board wipe that threatens to take out our hard-earned creatures. I'd also want to include Eldrazi Monument as a must-have regardless of the build path. We can make an absurd number of creatures, so sacking one every turn to make our army unstoppable? A small price to pay. For our tribal-specific package, I'd want to lean into lords. Let's include what we can to turn those elves into beefy beaters. Elvish Champion, Imperious Perfect, and Elvish Archdruid all help our go-wide team go a little taller. Dwynan's Elite is two bodies for the price of one, with basically no drawback in our deck as we will have tons of elves on board. Elvish Ambush and Elven Promenade make us plenty of tokens based on what we have, and Second Harvest can double up on our tokens. We'll look at a few more token doublers in the upgrade section, that's for certain. A secret weapon will be Wellwisher. In a go-wide tribal strategy like this, the life gain will make us practically unstoppable. Gaining 20 plus life a turn between Wellwisher and activations of Lathra. And our go-wide strategy would love artifacts like Throne of the God Pharaoh or even Coat of Arms to help close out games. And don't forget the strict upgrade to end raise forerunners, the Hoof Daddy Crater Hoof Behemoth. No single card has closed out more games than the Hoof. For our Voltron Go Tall strategy, we want to look at a few equipment that best make use of tribal synergies that are consistent between the two builds. Stoneforge Masterwork is a must-have here as it is a targeted coat of arms. Perfect for what we're looking to do. One of my favorite seldom played equipment is Sigil of Valor. It essentially gives each of your creatures exalted. Great if you want a big beefy lateral attacking and all of your little elflings to sit back to block. And let's take advantage of the on damage trigger by getting double strike and trample. Double strike with a fire shrieker lets us get twice as many elves on that combat damage trigger. And trample with a locksit on warhammer can ensure we're always getting at least some damage through to our opponents. We could easily add in Trailblazer's boots to make them almost entirely unblockable. And why not swords too? Feast and Famine, Fire and Ice, Sinew and Steel, all the tasty ones, to help make Lathril unblockable, protected from removal, and dealing plenty of damage. All together, one list with both builds are sure to be vicious and effective, regardless of the group or power level you're playing at. For upgrades, there are tons of pieces I'd ensure I'd include. I'm keeping black tutors in the list by default to ensure power level is as high as you're hoping, but there's some great utility we can include as potentials. The first is greatly upping our card draw and card quality with Sylvan Library. Seeing three cards a turn and paying life to grab a few extra cards should be an easy choice. If you really want a 4 to 5 to 6 turn clock, then paying 4 to 8 life for a few more cards shouldn't even be a decision. Then there are the doublers. Doubling Season and Parallel Lives. Both are very expensive thanks to new commanders like Lathro, but the potency they represent in a deck like this, where you will be making tokens, is irrefutable. These are some of the best cards you'd want to ensure you consider adding. So, Pulsating Kiwi, let's take a look at this list. Our first goal is Elf Tribal. The majority of this list is cut down from the original, where we've reworked staples that remain consistent whether you're going for a Voltron strategy or a Tribal strategy. Now, there's a tidy package you can pivot to, if you want to go, go wide or go tall. Our tribal package is aimed at getting those little elves and making them dangerous. Plenty of lords and ladies that can turn a 1-1 into a 4-4 or more. 
perfect for someone that wants to be eating life totals with a massive board. Then there's our Voltron component. This is more aimed about going tall with lateral and slamming in for bigger amounts of damage. Our little elves will remain little, but that also means we'll have chump blockers for days. And once we get ambitious, we can start ending our opponents with lateral commander damage or even activations. This is a mean list and you can slug it out with the best of them. Whether you want to poke in for death by a thousand cuts or kill someone with a single decisive blow. I hope you like what I did with the deck, Kiwi. Please ensure to let us all know in the comments how you manage with these lists. And thanks again for choosing to support the channel. Everyone else, let us know in the comments how you would continue to improve this list. But as always, until next time folks, good luck and have fun. Once again, I wanted to thank all of our patrons for helping to support the channel. We could not do this without you. A special shout out goes to our Lodestone Golems, Ben Frain, Sterling Lankford, Will Briggs, Ben Davis, David Neri, and Corey Whitaker. And to our Metalwork Colossi, Austin Charlotte, Charles Olson, Matthew Chandler, Ben Shackelford, Pulsating Kiwi, and Jim. Thank you everyone, Ken, we couldn't do this without you.